Hello, um, I've just received a package from HakadiBattery.com. Let's take a look inside. Uh, yes, inside this package under all the bits and pieces are four Hakadi uh, battery prismatic cells, lithium ion phosphate, LIFEPO4, 105 amp hours. Now I should say that they didn't come in this small box. This is just something I could fit in front of the camera. They were in a much bigger box with lots of packaging in between the cells and all around. So these are lithium ion cells, uh, specifically lithium ion phosphate, uh, LIFEPO4, so LFP105. They're 105 amp hours. Nominal voltage is 3.2. Uh, top of charge will be 3.65 volts. Bottom is, I think, 2.5 volts. There's the watt hours, 336. And they say that the internal resistance should be less than or equal to 0.7 milliohms which we can test. Um, now these are branded Hakadi but they are actually EVE cells. They're of course grade A, they're brand new so we should get in excess of the quoted capacity when I do my capacity tests. So four of these cells uh, in series that will be 12.8 volts. Uh, these are the barcodes and I presume these are the EVE barcodes. They've also got Hakadi uh, barcodes on these as well, so they're all fully traceable. So accessories are these uh, spacer sheets, plastic sheets that sit between the cells, because these cells, when you are pre-treating them, uh, need to be compressed. So the first thing I've got to think about is some method of um, compressing them. And yes, I was working on that yesterday. Uh, the other accessories, of course, are these um, bus bars and nuts that go on these threaded studs. I'm not sure what size those are. They look like maybe five or six mil, I'll check. Uh, yeah, this is measuring sort of 5.96 mil. So I presume these are M6. Now I do have the data sheet for these cells, um, but it does say proprietary confidential on them. So rather than show them, I'll probably just quote from them. Um, so before the uh, section on standard charge, there's a section on compression. So I've had to build a compression jig. And so I've built this. Um, now I've had to go into wide angle lens because uh, this is quite big. So it's all going to look a bit distorted probably, but um, it's a 400 millimeter piece of base wood, a couple of 200 millimeter high uh, arms, and they're mounted on these, or they're connected together with these right angle brackets. Now the only problem is there is a little bit of play in that, a bit of movement in that. And if you look at the data sheet for these cells, the compression force is three to five kilonewtons. Now, as I understand it, and I'll just check in a minute, that's something like three to 500 kilograms force. Yeah, that's approximately right. Now that's quite a lot of force. I mean, I was thinking of putting cable ties around this top section, but I think they just stretch and not actually achieve anything. So I've come up with something else, but let's pop the cells in this frame to kick off. Right, the sun's come out, so I'm going to have terrible problems with lighting now. But uh, yeah, I'll use these plastic sheets um, to put between the cells, and then I'll reverse pol polarity the cells um, as I put them in this frame. So another piece of plastic. Let's get the two remaining cells. Right, let's put the fourth cell in without its plastic sheets just for the moment, so I can get it in. And then put the plastic sheets between the cells final plastic sheet goes at this end. Yeah, so that all fits pretty good. But like I say, there is movement here. And this, um, I mean, 400 kilograms force is half the weight of my old car. So it's a lot of force. So I had to think about some uh, reinforcing hardware, which I've done and I'll go and get it now. Okay, so these plates um, I bought from Lidl when I was building the shed. And then I found today these right angle brackets, which are obviously 
um, a perfect match for the plates. So I put the right angle bracket brackets on the plates with some bolts. And this doesn't happen very often, but very occasionally, I'll just reset the uh, lighting for this. Um, it just fits perfectly. And this just happened to fit perfectly as an interference fit around there. I mean, how good is that? Let's just reset the lighting. A perfect fit, and this is pretty tough. Oh, let's reset the lighting again. Um, pretty tough steel, galvanized steel. It's probably getting on for two mil thick, maybe 1.8 mil thick. So I've built one for the front there and another one which will go round the back. Okay, the cells aren't quite centered in my rig, so let's just center them up so I can get those brackets on. Uh, yeah, I think that's a bit more central. And now these brackets go on here. And as I say, they're an absolutely perfect interference fit by pure fluke rather than anything else. Um, yeah, and then uh, down here, a couple of screws in here will keep the uh, angle brackets right angled so they don't just bend away. Now I reckon with those two uh, metal contraptions either side I'll have enough force to prevent. You're not trying to squash the cells but you are trying to prevent them expanding when you charge them. So I've brought this outside. Um, it's sunny today uh, so you can see what it looks like. It's a bit tricky in the workshop because it's quite heavy. Um, so yes, I've got those steel plates down the side with the angle brackets screwed onto the ends. So that should provide enough force to prevent the cells uh, pushing apart. And I've got one of those on either side. Plus I've got these angle brackets at the bottom, um, which should pre prevent too much movement. But of course the screws may be forced out. But I've, I've drawn a little pencil line across there so I can keep an eye on that. So compression, what's it for? How much do you need? Well, the specifications for force are in the data sheet. Um, why do you need it? When do you need it? This information is not really readily available, but I do watch Andy off grid garage and he did some research into uh, compression and his view on this is that you only really need it for the first few cycles uh, while you're forming the cells. And what you're trying to do is prevent localized gas bubbles forming, which will distort these packs and fatten them out and create bulges. Because this isn't a cylinder, cylindrical cells don't have this problem because they're already sort of at their nominal shape. But if these fill up with gas, they will want to puff out and you're trying to prevent that and thus force any gas bubbles generated up to the top of the cell, not to breach the um ports up at the top here but just to get all the gas at the top rather than pockets of it along the flat sides of these prismatic cells now if that's true that this um compression is only needed while forming or pre uh forming the cells in other words the first few charge cycles um then theoretically you could take all this off but the point is once you've built all this there's little point in dismantling it all you might as well just leave it in place because it works as a sort of frame to hold the cells for subsequent charge and discharge cycles so the next thing will be to fit the um, connection hardware these bus bars um, from oh, neg to pause and so on now i'm probably going to charge this battery as a 12 volt battery and I'll use um, this balancer. I'll just get that out of the pack. Yeah, this uh, Heltec uh, 4S balancer, uh, which I think has a LIFEPO 4 setting. Uh, yes, NCM LFP up the top on the switch there. Um, also has the little display so that I can see the cell voltages, make sure that they are all the same because I'm going to be taking this to 3.65 volts per cell so that's 14.6 volts for the pack um, get it up to 
uh, 3.65 volts per cell and then do separate discharges on each of the four cells to characterize them for um, capacity and make sure that we're getting the full 105 amp hours. Uh, one thing I can do before I charge these cells is an internal resistance check. So let's switch this thing on and now the data sheet says initial IR 0.32 milliohms plus or minus 0.05 that's with AC 1 kilohertz this is an AC 1 kilohertz tester uh, 30 to 40 percent state of, char of charge fresh battery so you're in t meant to do this test with uh, brand new batteries that you've not done anything with so let's put the positive on positive negative on negative can't show you that i'm afraid because it's out of range of the camera and okay so the cell is 3.3 volts and the internal resistance is 0.28 milliohms so that's slightly less than the 0.32 milliohms um, from the data sheet so that's looking pretty good let's do the next one if i can angle these test probes and that one is again 3.3 volts and 0.29 milliohms. So yeah, those look pretty good. Okay, I think that's it for this video. Um, you can imagine after I've built this rig, I've got a huge amount of tidying up to do. So I'll do that. I'm having terrible problems with lighting this um, at the moment because it's a sunny day um, but there you are there's some initial information on uh, the cells the specs the compression and also internal resistance but for this video that's it cheerio